Hello and welcome to the new year. Wow, 2023, y'all. So I figured we'd kick it off post filming my declutter series, which always makes me crazy, but I'm very glad that it's done because I was able to navigate my collection and find what I needed so much more easily today. So I figured we would kick it off with a trying new makeup. Everybody loves a trying new makeup video. And there are some very exciting things that have just been released. So first and foremost, we got to talk about this. This is not going to be my final review, I don't think, because I've only had it for about a week and a half. I've worn it a handful of times. I've only filmed one wear test of it. And I want to do a more exhaustive review because She's definitely complicated, but this is the new Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Foundation. I have the shade 2N. It's a fantastic match for me. I have some new stuff from LH Cosmetics that they sent me basically right before Christmas. <laughs> like, I was just neck deep in other things, and so I haven't gotten a chance to use these on camera yet. They're so pretty. I'll be combining that with some other stuff that I got from them. And as like a very necessary follow-up, Salt New York did send me all of their new shades. So that's what I'm going to try to do most of my like, you know, cheeks and stuff with today is going to be new stuff from Salt New York. She has revamped the shades and I'll swatch some of them for you. And we will end up with hopefully something really like effortless and pretty today. But before we jump in, I want to chat with y'all about today's sponsor. So you know that I am a huge fan of pretty much anything where you can combine luxury and sustainability, right? So anytime I find a brand that kind of aligns with my values in those respects, I am eager to share it. And today I wanna to talk to y'all about Lily Silk. It's where this beautiful sweater that I know you've all been looking at came from. And can I just tell you, it's the softest, it's the softest thing I've ever had on my body. If you're unfamiliar with Lily Silk, they make some of the most beautiful silk clothing and also accessories for your lifestyle. They are a zero waste company Company. They work with TerraCycle. So if you're unfamiliar with TerraCycle, I have a TerraCycle box there. A recycling company that finds ways to recycle pretty much everything. And they're also zero waste because they use any leftover materials and scraps from the clothing production process they use to make just the most gorgeous lifestyle accessories. You probably also like khaki. How'd you get those lovely curls today? My hair is naturally pretty curly, but it's not like this. <laughs> so this is their overnight curling set that I used. And I mean, it doesn't have to be overnight curls. It's just heatless curls. I just spritz my hair down, roll it up in this little baby and I let it dry. And then I, you know, add a little bit of hairspray or whatever to make the style stick. But it's just the easiest, quickest way to get really soft, natural looking curl. and tons of volume. So the other thing about Silk is that it's just really kind to your hair and your skin. And so I have been sleeping on their gorgeous Silk pillowcases for the last few months. And I've just noticed such a huge difference in my skin and my hair, less shedding. And also just, you know, my skincare seems to be more effective because cotton and other materials like that can really like soak up your skincare and soak up the natural oils in your hair, but not all silk is created equal. These are by far the softest, most exquisite, just silkiest, if you will, textures that I've ever slept on. There is both like the luxurious feeling of it, you know, of just like this really not, you know that it's helping your skin, but there's also like a feel good of it where you're just like, I'm treating myself really well right now. And like, that's the difference between just a silk pillowcase and like a really luxurious, nice one. They use 100% mulberry silk and the most gorgeous Mongolian cashmere. I have had lots of cashmere in my life. This is exquisite cashmere. <laughs> I just basically had resigned myself to the fact that like all sweaters were going to be itchy. I was like, I moved to the Northeast. I'm going to spend a quarter of my year just scratching my skin off. Nay, 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 not with Mongolian cashmere friends. This is, this is luxury. And what I really love about Lily Silk is that they are always pioneering new means of sustainability and eco-consciousness in this particular space. To me, that's kind of like the new definition of disruption for any industry is not just being different for difference sake, but making less of an impact on the planet for consumable goods that last longer and are higher quality. And finally, something that I've been thoroughly enjoying from Lily Silk is my new Silk sleeping mask. I am a bit of a nap queen. <laughs> my new saying for 2023 is there's a nap for that. <laughs> but I get a much more restful nap 
if I, you know, shut the light out, it's a lot less disturbed. And so I cuddle up in my sheets with my cat. I put this on and it's so, y'all, I know I keep saying it, but it's so freaking soft. They're so soft. This makes just, again, a really big difference in my comfort, but also you just feel like you're giving yourself a little moment, you know? It's it's just this little self-care thing of, hey, I have this little accessory specifically for the quality of my midday nap. To me, that's luxury, y'all. So I invite you to check out everything that Lily Silk has to offer. This is just a tiny sampling of what is to offer from the company. So uh, you can get an extra 12% off of your order with the code khaki12. Make sure that you use the link down below and let me know what y'all are excited about from Lily Silk. I've thoroughly enjoyed everything that I have had the opportunity to try from Lily Silk and I want to thank them for sponsoring this portion of today's video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into some makeup for the first time in like a month. <laughs> At least that's what it feels like. So it's storming outside. It's amazing. I went on a walk in the woods this morning right before it started raining and now it's just like gray and spooky outside. I love it. But we're working with like entirely artificial light right now. So bear with me. But can we talk about my skin real quick? Because even though like I am on my period right now and like, you know, my skin wants to kind of break out a little bit. It's the combination of the silk pillowcase and everything, but also I've been using this glycolic cream from a company called Maylove. It's amazing, it's unscented. They sent it to me. I had never even heard of the brand. They sent me a bunch of stuff. Y'all, it is as effective in like clearing my skin and making my pores all refined and you know, making everything look really brightened. It's as effective as any retinol I've ever used. I mean, everybody's skin is different as far as like what actives your face likes. Mine loves glycolic as it turns out, but yeah, man, I've just been really enjoying waking up to very clear skin lately. That and that Make Beauty Reverse Emulsion, that stuff is, that stuff is from, from space. If God is a woman and she lives in space, she made the Make Beauty Reverse Emulsion. Let's, let's start with this you know, like you do with foundation typically. I'm actually making a point today not to use any kind of primer or anything because this stuff is weird. It's kind of like it doesn't want you to do anything. Like it doesn't want you to do anything extra. It's almost like they tried to account for, I'm trying to find my brush. It's almost like they tried to account for everything so that you wouldn't have to. Ooh, ooh, hang on a second. <laughs> So Lily Sadugi reached out to me on Instagram and they were like, hey, can we send you some headbands for putting on your makeup? And I was like, yeah. So like I have all of my super fancy Lily Sadugi headbands, but now I have this one. I have another one that's like bright green also, but keep my hair out of my face here. Thank you, Lily Sadugi. Can we do something super, super patterned next? That would be great. <laughs> on with the show. So <laughs> great great shade match and when you first put this stuff on it's like really wet <laughs> it's like oddly wet you're like okay i should powder the heck out of it or i should you know use some kind of mattifying primer or something but it's really thin and it does self set it just takes a minute to do it and it's tough because i'm measuring everything against Chanel sublimage now. I've completely ruined myself <laughs> because of course a $42 foundation is not going to behave like a $135 foundation. That's just, you know, a, a ridiculous thing to expect. But the other thing that I have kind of been working around with this is just that since it is so thin on the skin, but it seems so hydrating, but then it does dry down on its own. It's like, okay, do I powder it? Do I prime under it? What kind of sunscreen do I use under it? And if you do the wrong thing, which I have not figured out exactly what the wrong thing is, I just know that I've done it. It will really accentuate texture that I didn't know I had. My friend Nicolette Panisi and I love, I mean, man, we, we love to compare notes whenever we get like a new foundation or whatever. She was also the one where we were, you know, comparing notes on the Make Beauty skin tint when it first came out. And she and I were like sending each other the most unflattering close-ups of our pores. We're just like, what is this? What is this? Because like the first day that I wore this, I could see like every clogged pore on my nose, like standing up. And like my forehead looked all dry and I was like, 
what is going on? I'm having like the best skin days of my life right now. And I'm using all this really gorgeous, like hydrating skincare. And this just made me look, it, it was beautiful in some spots. And then other spots, it was like, I didn't even know I had texture there, you know? And so I used the House Labs powder kind of immediately on it the first time. I was like, oh, it's pretty wet, you know? And I also used it with the Kosas concealer. And lately I've just been kind of like using it by itself, like no concealer, anything. And I kind of wait to powder it, let it do its own thing for a minute and then powder it if I absolutely have to. But it's like, I almost have to anticipate the fact that it's not going to stay do it's, it might stay dewy like this, but it's not going to stay hydrating like this. So I wonder if I need to like hydrate more which is interesting because it looks really hydrating, right? So anyway, that's why we're going to be going with a lot of cream products today. Lightweight cream, you know, Salt New York is not like crazy balmy, but I do, I don't wanna like give it any reasons to dry down in awkward ways. But I mean, you can't argue with that shade match. That's a great shade match. And what the advantage of a really, really good shade match, again, shade 2N, is that you can kind of put on as much or as little as you need. You don't have to go like your entire face has to be some kind of even shellacking. If you miss a spot, it's not a big deal because it's kind of a skin finish and it's also, you know, the actual color of my skin. Mm, the one disadvantage, it's like what's almost like really disconcerting about it is that it does, it feels like it's going to stay molten on your skin. It won't, but for a while, stuff is gonna like stick. Ah, it's weird. So what I'm gonna do is let that, let that do its thing. We're going to not introduce any complications to the equation, and we're just going to go straight in with the new Soul New York. It always makes me feel pretty. By the way, what I have on my lips right now, just for hydration's sake, is when I was decluttering, I was like, I have like two of every one of these and I never wear them and I should because I love them so much. This is the Kosa's Wet Lip Oil. This is my favorite shade. It's called Unzipped. And it's like this perfect, like translucent, beigey, rosy, cool tone kind of color. It's just beautiful and it has a little touch of shimmer to it, but not, you know what I mean? Not glitter. So that is what she looks like up close without powdering or without concealer or anything. I really love the finish. That's what makes it worth it for me to want to understand the formula really well, is because I wanna preserve this. And I always wanna try and understand the vision, right? Like I always wanna know what the brand owner had in mind to make sure that I am, you know, getting the full effect of it before I make my judgments. So I have here, my brand new little quad from Salt New York. These are three new shades and my beloved taupe contour. So here we have mauve, absolutely gorgeous. Cocoa, so cocoa is now permanent for all the cocoa lovers out there, myself included. And then this right here is maple. And I have to say, maple's the one, <laughs> it's so good. Let's start with some contour though. So I'm going to start with the 106 here from BK. Really, really good contour brush. Happy birthday to Lisa J. I think that today is her birthday, the day that I'm filming, not the day that this goes up. So happy birthday to her and to all of the Capricorns, but hers is very special because she's turning 40. Entering a new decade is always really exciting. I love this contour. It was really funny because when Hannah and I basically dared each other to take on makeup tutorials from one another, I asked her to contour. And she's like, I don't even have a contour. And then she's like, wait, yes I do. I have this old New York contour and I was like, I know. I was gonna be really sad if she actually like didn't have that realization because that's of course what I had in mind. I knew that she had them because she did a whole video on them. But she's like, you know, khaki. I did look kind of snatched and snooched, you know? Contour is powerful. And this color does actually work on Hannah and not look like, you know, a stripe of dirt on her face, which is always the fear with contour. There's something about this taupe shade that makes me brave, you know? It's like, Snatched and snooched. I've been watching too much All Stars. And we're here. I've been watching We're Here. <laughs> so I'm just quoting a lot of Shangela. All right. So next, I'm going to pull out this 
really great new little guy from BK. This is the 112 and it's so good for a cream blush. And we're going straight in with maple because I cannot be stopped. I love this shade so much. In fact, let's go ahead and swatch all of those. These are just the four that, you know, if I make up my palette, this is the, this is my palette of choice. So you can see they're very, if you're unfamiliar with Salt New York, they're very translucent. So they work on all skin tones. So we have the contour, taupe, then that's maple, mauve, and cocoa. And she also does adjuster shades, so you can mix those with, you know, a deepener or a lightener or whatever. If you mix cocoa with white, you get just one of the most beautiful, like pale nude, like lip colors or blush shades. And it's got a little bit of something rosy to it. So it's one of Hannah's favorite combos because she's a very, very, very pale olive. So <laughs> that was your crash course in cocoa. So here we go with maple. This little brush. I'm not usually a tiny brush person when it comes to cream blush. There's just something about this little guy. Also, the older I get, and I don't say, I don't mean like with age, I just mean like the more experience I get having, you know, makeup as the main thing on my channel, the more I realize my, my brushes get more and more precise. Now, the 105 is the exception, Tom. I'm going to make Hope Mess Tom buy this brush because we have to settle the bet, but like eyeshadow brushes for sure. I've just gotten a lot more patient with using precision. Although after my walk in the woods this morning, I got back inside and I had honest to goodness Fjord's cheeks, like the real thing. Not, you know, I wasn't like running in the woods. I was just walking in like chilly weather and I came in and I just had the most beautiful like rosy flush softly down my cheeks and everything. I was like, this is the one, <laughs> this is what, this is what we're going for. So going to give me a little cold girl moment, but do you see how maple is like not pink, but it's not orange. It's just this, like, it's like someone took peach and, or terracotta or whatever, you know, depending on the depth and just really desaturated it because it's like got, it's just got this, amazing like nude quality to it you know just like a like a mucky skin thing <laughs> and i don't even mean my skin i mean it's just like a skin thing <laughs> does that make sense i don't know but my lips being as pink as they are i do want to include a little bit of that mauve because it's just so darn pretty i'm gonna take mauve and go kind of right there Now, if you're sitting here wondering like khaki, is the salt in New York going to dry down? It's not. It's meant to look like skin. It's not like, you know, supposed to be this like high tech, long wearing bulletproof formula, but it is absolutely beautiful. And you can apply it with your fingers. You can take this compact with you wherever. My kid was home for a week. And obviously the weekends on either side and then one day before that. So 12 days, right? 12 days, 12 days of Christmas. And I wasn't able to, you know, come up here and like put on a full face or anything most of the time, but I had this little compact downstairs with me and I would just tippy tap my finger in there, you know, <laughs> try it out like that. So, I mean, you kind of can't argue with how just lovely and fresh that looks. So I am going to do my eyeshadow and then we'll clean up a little bit and then we'll maybe powder a little bit. But again, we're just kind of letting the Makeup by Mario live. I'm gonna start with the basic elements because I saw on her channel, on her channel, um, on Linda Hallberg's Instagram, I saw her do like a New Year's look with this palette and she started with one of the glitters and then kind of just contoured on top of that with matte shadows. And I need to just make a decision here. I think it's this one. I think we're gonna go for the gold today. It's just got the most gorgeous reflection to it. These are not all my colors because blue and silver, not really. You know, those aren't the things that I typically go for. 
but that gold has a really nice kind of like patina bronzeness to it. And then the copper right there is just, you know, that's a really easy color for me to wear, but it doesn't, the copper doesn't have a lot of glitter in it. So I'm just gonna take that gold on my finger. This is basically what I saw her do. See, it's got a little green, a little green thing to it. I'm just gonna spread it really like thickly on the lid and then just sheer it out of here. And then we'll go in with the new golden 20s palette and give the contour to the crease and whatnot. But what I like about these is how sticky they are, especially since I didn't powder underneath, like they feel almost creamy on my lids. And look how it builds. You can get like a full foil chrome from it. But they're very unconventional colors. I don't think that this is as easy to use colors wise as the Shimmer Saga for me. The Shimmer Saga has just, I don't know, infinite possibilities because they're just really great multi-chromes. They're more like toppers. There we go. Very pretty. Might go underneath my eyes with it too. Yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna take this little guy right here. This is an LH Cosmetics brush. This is the boop, 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 303. And just pick up some of that. Let's see if it will pick up. I'm not sure it will. Mm-hmm, more or less. I think that we just go in with the new Golden 20s. So that's this one. This is not new. I know it's in the name, it's new. But I just find this thing to be incredibly useful and we can really bridge the gap here with this nice kind of more sheer gold. But I'm going to start by kind of building the crease and stuff with just these really comfort zone kind of colors over here. So I'm going to go in with this beautiful soft gray here. It's like a taupey gray. And it just brings everything back down to earth makes it look intentional. Really, really easy. Linda Hallberg really understands color. And so she's always kind of inspired me to trust the process a little more than I typically would. Like sometimes I don't see a look all the way through when I look at her makeup, you know? When I look at like the actual palette itself, but watching her on social media, I'm like, oh, okay. like. I get the vision, I get I get what she was going for. And I always say it, I'm a broken record, but I love when makeup and makeup artists make me think differently about what is possible with makeup. And her stuff does that. All right, I'm gonna take my other, one of my little sneaky favorites here. This is the 209. I love it because it's like asymmetrical a little bit. It's like flat on one side and round on the other. It's really awesome. And I'm going to use that with this like warmer kind of terracotta brown. I'm gonna do that like right on my outer corner here. And I'm like deepening the crease, but it's warm. So I might have to go in with something a little bit cooler on top of it. But I do wanna do that underneath my eye as well. Mainly what it does is it brings the warmth back to it that makes it go with my eyes because if there's a lot of green sitting right next to my brown eyes, it can be nice, it can kind of make things go golden or it can make them glow demon red because color theory is kind of polarizing like that. So if I can put something brown right next to my eye, you know, even if this the local color is green, if there's like brown right here and right here, it makes my eyes less likely to glow demon red. <laughs> so I will then take something really small here. I'm gonna use the 207 and I'm gonna dip it into this really lovely cool gray and I'm gonna layer that just right above the actual crease on the outside like that and we'll blend it in with a bigger brush. But it's like, I don't want you to know that there's gray there as much as I want it to just give the illusion of a shadow. And I'll actually use that right here too. Just in that little dip underneath my eye. And then we take that first fluffy guy. I'm gonna use that taupey shade that we started with. And that's what I'm going to blend the edges of that with very, very softly. I'm not gonna go for an exaggerated highlight or anything. I want this to be pretty chill. I'm gonna really gently 
blur that out underneath my eyes. And I feel like we are getting a little more depth on this side than on this side, so I'm gonna take a little bit, a little bit more of the darker brown on the outside, and a little bit more of the gray. Yeah. Okay. Now I talked about that, that really pretty kind of softer gold that's in there, and I'm going to just kind of tap that to blend because it's a little bit more translucent, I'm going to blend the brown with the first gold that I laid down. And do a little bit underneath my eye as well. Like that. All right. Beautiful. Love that. So Smoky Quartz is one of the Victoria Beckham, like, what do they call these? Like the uh, Satin Cajole Jewel Aligners. And it's just this really beautiful gold medium bronze. It's not the bronze pencil. It's a little bit darker than that. It's got a little bit more impact. So that's why I like it. And that's what I'm going to use to line here. It's gonna give an overall really soft effect. Okay, let's do some brows. I'm going in with my Westman Atelier brow pencil. It's got a little bit of a green undertone to it. I think it's gonna work really nicely for this. And it's dash shaped on the end. It's a big chunky dash, which if you've got really full brows already, you know, you kind of just don't wanna bother drawing all the little hairs in. So it's nice because you just, you just kind of scrape it over them and it gets the job done a lot faster. I'm grabbing my authored brow gel. It's just what I've been really enjoying lately. And it does have a little bit of coolness to it. So it'll kind of balance that green out. I've been using this for probably a lot longer than I should, but brow gels, I feel like, yeah, you can kind of push the limits <laughs> on the expiration. Plus there's just so much in the container. I'm going to just put on, hmm, a touch of mascara here. I'm going to use the Finding Ferdinand. And I'm just kind of fluffing them outward. This layers really beautifully and it also extends and defines. There's a lot of control and it's not super heavy, but it is a tubing formula and I like it a lot. I hope that they release a brown. Love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, so after my brows dry, I'm gonna go in with the Kamiko brow gel to you know really define everything. But I am now fairly confident that we can powder ever so slightly, so. I'm going to use my House Labs powder because it is just like so delicate and gorgeous. Very, very little here on a 108 from BK. It is such a hydrating formula. And so I do feel like when you powder it, it doesn't totally love it. And so that's why I do want to be delicate with it but I do want to take down the shine just a little. And it might be even better to use something like the Kosas because the Kosas is really very, very, very lightweight. It almost doesn't mattify at all. So that might be a good choice too. And I just want to use a little bit of like a matte white on my inner corner. Not because I, you know, I like it bright, but mainly I just want to blend it because my finger doesn't fit in there. So I just want that to look finished. Lovely. I was going to use a little bit of this new lipstick that they sent me as well. Where did I put her? I think that that would go with this really beautifully, actually. If it's too much, we'll just go back to the Kosas, but let's try it. So this is the shade Kiss of Life and LH Cosmetics just sent this to me as well. But yeah, I'm just really trying to go for something super like pretty, but low key. One way that I keep things low key on me <laughs> is to not define my cupid's bow too much. Ooh, that's pretty. A lot of the stuff that I have from her for the lips is really cool tone and that's actually a really beautiful kind of like apricot pink, coral kind of thing. But it's so balmy and like medium pigment. Yes, I really feel like that brought out the kind of like pretty healthy flush in my cheeks even more. Yay. <laughs> it's giving like a very effortless, I'm cold kind of vibe. So let's take a look. I'm just gonna look on my phone here uh, for the Makeup by Mario. Get the scoop here. So I did order this myself and then the company reached out to me and they were like, hey, you want our new foundation? And I was like, y'all are a little late. <laughs> I was like, keep me in mind. Like, here's my address, but like, 
I buy things right when they come out. So anyway, this is $42. So far it has four stars on Sephora and it has 63 reviews. We're looking at 30 shades. Natural finish, and we've talked about this, but natural finish is kind of the new terminology for like, we don't know. <laughs> because everything from Fenty Eavesdrop, which is quite satin matte, all the way to this, you know, it, all the way to the uh, Patrick Ta, that balm foundation from last year, and the Lady Gaga uh, House Labs foundation, like they all call themselves a natural finish. I feel like it's just this catch-all because people don't want to make makeup right now that claims to be dewy because dewy is like going out of style, basically, even though this is really dewy. <laughs> this is a very, very dewy kind of radiant foundation. It's certainly not the same finish as like a Fenty Ease Drop or like the House Labs Foundation. And yet here we are still calling it natural just because I think that they think, I think that brand owners think that people aren't going to buy things that call themselves dewy right now. I'm gonna do my brow gel. All right, so here we have the Brow Sensei. It's a brand new one. Kimiko sent this to me. I have bought this for myself in the past. Just an absolutely gorgeous, really detailed, refined looking clear brow gel. Like look at the difference side to side. It's got a great amount of hold, but it's not crunchy. There we go. And I've actually been spritzing this with something like the uh, Eau de Beauté, the Beauty Elixir from Caudalie, because it's not dewy, but I don't know, I feel like it kind of balances things a little bit. And it sets everything down, but it doesn't add any dewiness. In fact, it might even dry it out a little bit in a good way. So that's what I've been doing with this stuff lately. And it's been helping it to kind of, again, balance that hydration so that I don't end up with quite as much of the like weird texture that I've been having. Anyway, back to the show. Yes, it says it's hydrating. It's a liquid formula, long wearing, medium coverage. All of those things I would agree with. What is a breathable, luminous foundation that, uh, it says luminous, see natural finish, but they call it luminous. Foundation that effortlessly builds and blends to illuminate the complexion with customizable, long wearing coverage. It is customizable. I can build it pretty well, but if you build it and then you powder it, good luck. Like it can look real, real cakey, real mucky, because it's just wet, you know? Highlighted ingredients, grapeseed oil and vegetal squalene provide restoring, moisturizing benefits. Perfecting powders works with skin's natural texture for a smooth and enhanced finish. To me, that is the self-setting quality. What else you need to know? This foundation reveals skin's natural luminosity. It features moisture grip technology hydrates the skin and glides on easily for customizable coverage. Layer it on or sheer it out. The buildable formula works harmoniously with powders or creams while staying true to its original color. Its original color, yes, but I will, I will show the clip again of, you know, the end of the day wear test. It just kind of, it, it just builds up underneath your eyes if you try and build it and then powder it. So one thing that Nicolette pointed out to me because she is also a student of ingredient lists, right? Of just understanding why something's behaving the way it's behaving based on what's in it kind of thing. And she was like, I think it's interesting, the combination of silicones, oils, and water. <laughs> like it's a, it's a choice. The first ingredient is water. That could be good news, but a water-based foundation, if it's entirely water-based with not enough emulsifiers in it, can mean that like, if you sweat, bye-bye. You know what I mean? Like it could just be not long wearing in that sense because our bodies are made of 70% water and it tends to kind of like, you know, make the makeup dissolve. But, you know, this is, it seems to be a pretty sophisticated formula. It's been wearing pretty nicely on me. So I don't think that that's a huge issue in this case, but uh, it's got caprolyl methicone. I'm, I'm guessing that that is some kind of coconut dimethicone. <laughs> And uh, it has dimethicone in it and some other things that I don't know, but it's also got squalene. That might be why it's being weird. But squalene's way, 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 way down on the list, which means it's probably below 1%. So, you know, I don't think it's gonna have that big of like an impact, but we do. We have water, we have squalene, we have grapeseed oil, sunflower oil, and then we also have at least two different silicones and some, you know, silica for like, you know, that's quartz basically. It's going to like soak up moisture. You know, as these things go, it's a fairly simple ingredient list. And I mean, overall so far, I think that, I mean, yeah, $42 is still an expensive foundation by most people's standards. You know what I mean? That's not nothing. <laughs> 
$42. Everything should perform. You shouldn't have to spend your money on anything that doesn't perform. But it is the beauty of the formula, like how actually gorgeous it looks on the skin that makes me want to figure out the right way to hack it in order to get optimal results, that makes me want to keep trying it because it, it has had a couple of imperfect wears on me, but it shows so much promise that I don't, I don't want to kick it out of bed yet, you know? So there you can see it with the, with the powder underneath my 35 year old eyes. I've not had anything done to my eyes. <laughs> I have Botox in my forehead and I have filler in my lips. I've never done anything to my eyes. So that's, you know, that's how it looks freshly powdered, but I was so, 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 so careful not to powder too much because typically with, you know, most things that I wear, like a Kosas concealer and things like that, if you, you know, lay powder on top of it, it's fine. It stabilizes and it's fine. But this is just so emollient, so hydrating that it does kind of want to slide around and like break up a little bit if you over powder it. So I'm gonna try it with some more powders, but this is probably the best looking application that I've gotten so far. And I will say they are entirely correct in a claim that's like, it goes on super smoothly. I don't know, you, you sometimes put on foundations and you feel like they're just kind of like difficult to apply, you know, difficult to get them even on the skin. It also goes to, again, a really great shade match, which is not gonna be the case for everybody. But since I have such a great shade match in this line, I can put this on with a flip flop and it'd be fine. It's just a really, really agreeable, easy to use formula. So I am enjoying it so far. As far as, I mean, Salt New York, y'all, I mean, <laughs> Look at it. That's what I love about Salt New York is it's just, it's an open book, right? Like what you see is what you get with Salt New York. It's beautiful, kind of dewy skin finish, a little bit better than skin finish, very pretty colors kind of makeup. And I love that she has really leaned into these more nuanced colors as it's not just, you know what I mean? It's not just like this top down approach of like Kiki saying, I love these colors, combine them as you will. She has taken so much on board from her community. And that's, I mean, that's what I admire the most about this brand. And I really think that, you know, it continues to grow and innovate because she has such a great, like open-minded pulse on what it is that people want. And as those wants and needs change and evolve too. So, you know, making Coco permanent, you know, keeping certain ones, keeping like Rose and stuff like that, but like integrating things that are a little bit more of this, like, you know, sugar plum and spice, but making them a little bit more nuanced and keeping them permanent kind of thing based on what people really like and what resonates with her audience. And so, you know, I always say this, but if you're unfamiliar with the entire like life cycle of Kiki, Kiki G makeup and uh, Salt New York on my channel, you know, I used to do very youtube -y makeup back in the day where I was wondering why I just didn't feel like myself after I had just, you know, shellacked myself with a mask of full coverage long wear, you know? And I was, my skin was breaking out every way possible. And I just was having a really difficult time kind of like feeling like myself in my own skin. And I found Kiki's channel and she showed me that you can wear makeup that isn't bulletproof and looks possibly imperfect but is a lot lower effort and you don't have to powder it to death or anything like that and feel more beautiful with less makeup on which was a revelation for me. It was just this very effortless approach to less is more and genuinely feeling happier more comfortable in my skin and that was before she even brought out the palettes or the pans that go in them or anything like that. And you know, she and I have become friends. We lived in Austin at the same time now. She lives in New York, I live in New Jersey. We're able to see each other now. And she's just one of those people whose eye and whose intuition I respect so much and it really speaks through her products because this is the kind of product that is made to be easy to approach, easy to use, and makes you feel really beautiful. And I just love that now you can kind of find a color in her line that speaks to you. Do you know what I mean? Like you don't have to buy four to, you know, watercolor them all on your skin and, you know, get a customizable look every single day. That's not what everybody wants. I like that now like maple exists so that I can just like pound one color on my cheeks if I want to and it is dialed into perfection. It's like what I didn't know I needed, you know? So yeah, I'm just wearing like the contour as my contour 
and maple and then I just wanted to pull in a little bit more pink as my local color and so I've got that mauve and it just works beautifully and I feel incredible in it. So yeah, I feel a personal attachment to her brand because again, it's like this whole pathway that has led me to feeling more beautiful with less makeup on kind of thing. And y'all know I love a full beat as much as the next girl, but I love also having options. And as far as LH Cosmetics, I, again, I trust her vision. This is not necessarily the most like uh, me, you know what I mean? First and foremost thing that she has, but like, <laughs> I don't know if y'all been watching my other videos with LH Cosmetics in them thus far. I've been kind of like, when is she gonna put out something that's not for me? Because she and I have very similar complexions, very similar undertones. She's a lot warmer than I am, I should say, or at least she leans a little bit warmer, like with her hair color and things like that. But I, I really appreciate all of the like super desaturated cool tones that she does for like lips and stuff like that. And I was like going through her collection and I was like, does this work? on the whole or do I just think it works on the whole because it works so well for me? And so I'm glad to see actually something that I can say is beautifully high quality and for someone else, you know? <laughs> Not that I can't wear it, but that it does seem to be primarily for a different skin tone than mine. Either way, I think that the patina gold is absolutely beautiful. And of course, I mean, this is a really good example of like everything seems to work for me. <laughs> like this looks like it was made for me. It's just the perfect neutral to cool tone palette with just really nice textures in it. And you know, I can't say enough about the actual formulas. They're so, so high quality and beautiful. So I hope y'all enjoyed this first little video coming into 2023. And I hope that you will also check out Lily Silk. I wanna thank them again for sponsoring today's video. Again, you can get 12% off of your order with Khaki 12. So thank you again to Lily Silk, and I hope y'all enjoyed this. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. I will throw a video right here up. I'm probably gonna put my declutter series up here for you. <laughs> in the meantime, it's like literally four or five hours of just content to play in the background, if that's what your heart needs right now, because I think we all need to decompress a little bit. So I hope you're having an okay Mercury retrograde and okay January so far. And if it's great, that's even better. <laughs> I love you all so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.